Hello everyone, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. In the previous episode, we started to lay out this new neighborhood that's going to transition us between the downtown area and the campus area. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with the layout and overall configuration of this area, but I do think that I've made a couple of mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes that I've made is I really haven't given the Brandenburg Gate the location it deserves. And I don't want this to become a thing where I change its location every single episode, but for the third episode in a row, I'm gonna do that. So today what we're gonna do is work on filling in this area. We're gonna zone it, we're gonna add necessary city services. We are going to uh, make sure that it is a functional place and really start to grow the population in this area. So right now we have approximately 51,500-ish people living in the city. And I would anticipate that by the end of this episode, we have about 10,000 more, which is a pretty significant jump. But this is a very large area and it's going to be predominantly residential because that is what we need the most. So let's get started. So one of the things that I was really, I guess, most... Um, unhappy with with the, the previous build is fireman's park uh first of all the name <laughs> so fbfd memorial park is not great we're gonna rename that yeah i just want to i want i want to make that a little bit uh, uh a, a little bit more clear as far as what this place is so next one of the thing that's, things that's really unique about this uh, Central Park asset is that it's actually a number of assets put together and you can link up to paths within here in a variety of locations. And I didn't really take advantage of that. Uh, but today we're going to. And I think that we're going to do that in a way that you find interesting. So first, there's a whole roadway network thing happening here that I just don't like. I think that we could make, we could add some more attractions to this area and make it a more interesting place. So we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to break up the roadway grid that we've established and improve things a bit. So at this point, when you see me making all of these changes, you might be thinking to yourself, "Wow, I just completely deviated <laughs> from my previous line of thought." And I have. I'm going to change this entirely. I'm actually going to pause this for a moment because I, I don't want to have to use eminent domain repeatedly to make this work. Okay, so I think it's important that I provide some insight into my thought process here. And what I'm thinking is that we have an opportunity here to incorporate the Brandenburg Gate into the Central Park area and potentially add some additional concert venues. And I wanna back things out from here because I think that one of the things that we're missing in this area uh, really is, is, is a way to make it unique. <laughs> one of the problems with just kind of wholesale using this asset as is is that it, as I, as I remarked in the previous uh, episode, it's really uniform looking. And if we just take it and plop it as is, it's gonna remain uniform looking. So we're going to jazz it up a bit, add a few things to it, make it unique, and demonstrate that just because it is a vanilla building doesn't, doesn't mean that it necessarily has to look vanilla. So one of the things that I'm gonna be doing, uh, quite unfortunately, is really, messing up the bike network <laughs> but we are going to fix it don't uh, don't don't fret about that too much in fact I will do some of that right now okay so now we have bike connections that you that make their way throughout this entire area and someone could conceivably bike through this entire area now I'm not going to go too far into the bike network because I want to save that for a future episode so what I want to do now is think a little bit about what this area should be. And I mentioned a festival grounds, so that's one thing. So I do have that uh, that DLC that that has the uh, 
the, the festival area in the fan zone park and we are going to place that now so what i'm thinking is it would be really really neat to have this centered on this road and be able to come up catch a concert here and then go to the central park there could be multiple concerts going on at once and this particular concert venue is going to have an influence on the land uses around here so i want to place that right now so this this road which is right now hemlock street what probably won't be once we finally detail this area um this uh particular road I, I don't want it to be a road that is a barrier i want it to be well integrated into this area and one of the ways that i'm going to do that is actually to throw the fan zone on the other side of this road so i really want this to feel like a part of the park and we're going to be looping pedestrian facilities through this entire area connecting up all of these different areas uh, but before we get there, there's one more thing I really want to incorporate into here besides a fire department, because I think that's important. I want to get the, the helicopter memorial or helicopter uh, unique building. So one of the ways that we're going to do that is we're going to develop this area here. Now, there are a number of city services that the downtown area could benefit from if we only had a, 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 an appropriate place to put them. Now, this is... This can be a challenge. Uh, one of the challenges associated with doing that is, you know, the, most of this, the core service buildings are not that attractive to look at. <laughs> so I, I think that placing them in an area that you want to be attractive uh, can be a challenge. That said, they are necessary. And in this area, I think we have an opportunity. We have this rail line, which makes the value of this land really atrocious. So <laughs> why not? take that that thing that is really not a benefit and, and turn it into a positive for us uh, but I do want to still think about ways to hide these buildings and I think the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to have a frontage of commercial buildings and then this area down here is relatively flat so we will use that as a means of uh, laying some of these helicopter depots down so I'm going to get that started now So this weird little block back here is going to be where we place all of our, our helicopter depots. So I want to have not just a uh, not just the fire depot, but also I want a police helicopter depot and a medical depot. And that should unlock our, our, our unique building. Let's do that right now. So you might be wondering, how am I thinking about the road network in here? Uh, truthfully, I'm thinking that the development of the roadway network in here and the way it looks is, is not all that important because of the types of uses in here. What's more important is configuring the space so that it works to fit all of the buildings in here. And that's truthfully going to be kind of a trick. Now I don't know why the medical helicopter depot is, is, is it within the normal uh, menu for medical facilities, but it is, it's kind of weird. I'm just trying to think about the best way to orient these buildings so that I can fit them all in. And it's it, like I mentioned, this is going to be kind of a trick and it has not been uh, the easiest task as, 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 as is easily, as is fairly easy to see when you, when you look at all of the trouble I'm having moving all these around. But I am going to fit them all back here because that is my goal and we are going to accomplish it. <laughs> so... There we go. I knew this was possible because I sandbox everything. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew it wouldn't be a thing that I couldn't do. I just knew it would be a trick. So I do want to kind of gentle, make this curve a bit more gentle. So I'm going to use the freeform tool in my road guidelines to make a curve here. I just don't like that angle. It's kind of weird. So, uh, and, and, and truthfully, not the most safe movement you'd think it would you'd have to really slow down to make that and all these buildings are going to be hidden anyway so i'm not overly concerned about how this looks i'm also not uh all that worried about efficient use of space back here we are going to extensively landscape around this and try to hide this from everything on both this side 
of the depot and on the other side because these are not very nice looking buildings. Maybe that's a little bit too, <laughs> uh, you know, objective or uh, subjective of me to uh, to state, but I don't think that they are particularly attractive buildings, but they are a necessity. And uh, along with, along that mindset of necessity, one of the other things I want to take a look at is our trash processing. I know that we took care of that a little bit. However, I think that we're going to run into issues again. You see, that there's still some issues. I might throw another processing complex back here, a transfer facility back here, with the idea of being able to serve the other half of the downtown area. And again, this is going to be hidden back here. It's another one of these fenced off buildings. And because of that, I think it's going to fit really, really well back here. Uh, that said, I'm a little dubious about the orientation of this building. I'm going to temporarily relocate it because that's something that people can do. <laughs> And uh, we'll give it another shot. This is probably not going to work. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> mulligan time. And actually, rather than calling it a mulligan entirely on that, might just have a short extension of what is now Jeremy Holmes Street and will not remain Jeremy Holmes Street forever. And we'll put that there for now. The other thing I want to think about uh, in terms of transportation is we've not to date had any taxi service. But I do think that that is an important consideration for this area. And I'm going to have that back here as well. So this is good. I don't really think we need to add much more back here. What I do think we do need to do though is, and that was a lot of do, 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 do. Um, what we do need to do <laughs> is work on the topography a little bit. And then I think I want to make this a nice clean connection over here. So I'm going to try to mirror this roadway. This is going to be a little bit of a trick. And I don't like exactly what I've, I've done right here. We have most of the roads in this area are curvilinear and I think it would make sense to continue our curvilinear roads even if it's just for thematic purposes. Very, very good. So we are going to have commercial uses along this road. Oh boy, that is super ugly. I cannot stand that. We've got to fix that. Even if it means that I just end this a little bit sooner. I still hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I'll just eliminate this entirely. And we will use landscaping and fences to make this better. So let's get some water to these. The city is running. And if it's running, that means that fires are possible. Ooh, and now with our roadway reconfiguration, you can see that I have totally destroyed our water pipe network. All right, I think that works well enough for me at least. So now that we have this in place, we have this established, we can start finishing up our park. So the reason I wanted to place all of those helicopter depots is I wanted the unique building uh, associated with the helicopter. So let's find that now. All right, the helicopter park. So I think that this would be another neat amenity to have within this area that uh, would fit within kind of the the, uh, the the kind of the theme of this area and we're also gonna have a fire station and I think a watchtower might be a neat feature in here as well not only does it provide coverage but it's a uh, kind of a tourist attraction this is this is what uh, this is what this area is all about so we have this large park area we all we need to blend it all together now so we're gonna do that with paths one of the things I want to do before I construct the paths though is get ready for those paths by making sure that we have a pedestrian connection across the road here I'm gonna relocate this fan zone so that the pedestrian connection fits right with that uh, now let's get some pedestrian paths through the park
Okay, so I like that. I do think we're going to want to put some fences up to make sure I don't inadvertently zone. Not to necessarily keep people out of the park. <laughs> I do see we have... Oh, I thought there was zoning there. I guess it actually wasn't there. <laughs> So I need to move this watchtower because it's a little bit in the way. I might actually move that closer to this this fire station. So we'll have that all of those things in close proximity, but I want to make a connection to that main path. And that's challenging to do with that fire tower there. So what I'm doing here is just providing people a variety of options for walking. So I think we're going to do the exact same treatment over here that we did on the other side, which is provide a place for a pedestrian path and for a crossing. So we've done that now. So now all of these things are well integrated into the park and I think they fit in really well. It feels like everything is connected, maybe except for this. So we are gonna to need to landscape this area to make it fit in a little bit better, but there's one last thing I wanna place in here. Maybe it's gonna be a little surprising. And that is, I wanna think right off the bat about mass transit in this area. This is going to be a densely populated area. And we're gonna consider this a planning subway station because we are going to have uh, subway uh, stations, metro stations throughout this entire area. But this is an absolute necessity. We need to get people from the festival grounds to the subway as, as quickly and easily as we can. And while we're clicked, clicking in here, why don't we uh, take a look at this? We'll have an ad campaign and a premium studio. I want to make this a really premier concert venue. Maybe that'll allow us to boost up the ticket prices and make some money. We'll see. Oh, and we are having problems with our police coverage, not surprising. And back here in this area where we have all of these service buildings, I think that a police department headquarters would fit well as well. All right. So this will serve us well in this area. We need all of this protection. And you see that <laughs> we have some significant security issues. All right. So the other thing I was looking at uh, and I want to get to before I go any further, before I forget, is I want to make sure that we have connections from this area into our new neighborhood and that those pedestrian connections aren't good enough in my mind. So I am going to use a little bit of eminent domain, connect through here, have some at grade crossings that will at some point likely need to be upgraded. But for the time being, we will at least have them available. And I'm gonna use eminent domain here because it, they, the, the, these buildings are unreasonably close to the train tracks. We wanna give some space so that we can add some landscaping to act as a buffer. Okay, very good. So we have a lot going on at this park now. Uh, I talked about fencing. I think I might hold off on, on having fences in this area. We'll do some heavy landscaping and I will be very careful with my placement of, uh, of zoning in this area. So one of the things I don't love about this asset is that it uses a lot of uh, elder trees. That said, it's gonna look really weird if I use a bunch of different types of trees in this area. So I am going to kind of continue the pattern with alders and then we will add in a couple of things to spruce things up. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of alder trees in there, and what you can see that it has done is, is made it really difficult to tell where the central park is and where the other stuff is, and that is exactly what I wanted. Now, I do want to add additional landscaping that's a little more varied 
And one of the nice things about the Central Park asset is that you can see it's made up of multiple different sections. And functionally, what that means is I have the opportunity to potentially add my own landscaping in there. So let's go overhead and see if we can sneak some trees in between. Okay, so maybe I got a little uh, <laughs> overzealous with the trees. Maybe I went a little crazy adding just a couple palm trees into this area. But in my mind, Verde Beach is a tropical place and not having some of those tropical trees is a real missed opportunity. So I wanted to make sure that we have those. So one of the things that I'm noticing that I don't think I am gonna be able to fix and you might think about it as you look through this is there are trail connections that I wish I could make on this side of the park. It's just impossible. That's why I made the couple of outside connections I could over here because there are not a lot of opportunities. So there is kind of a lack of connectivity in that way. There's yeah, connections here, uh, but through this whole center area, you can't make a connection because the roads are too close. The way I could fix that would be to back this out another few tiles. I'm not motivated to do that. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's in a good place right now and we're gonna leave it as a result. So that's disappointing, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I'll change it in the future, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> so, all right, so let's start thinking about what we need in this area. So first, I wanna think a lot about the public transportation network. We have a spur of a metro line over here and I wanna continue that. But I don't want to have have these too close to one another. So we are gonna to try to space these appropriately. And we might not even have one anywhere else. Uh, that these three, I mean, this is really close, but this is, I, I view this to be a festival sort of stop. It's a, it, it's a destination stop. Presumably, if this were real life, there might not even be stops there uh, when festivals are not occurring, but it would get so much utilization during festivals that it would warrant having it there. And then I would really like to be able to loop this. I don't know which way this will go in the future. You probably wouldn't see more tunneling than is necessary, but here's where I will take some liberties and say it's a game. And I don't know exactly where I want to tunnel in the future, so or how I want these routes to be configured. So I might as well get the tunnel, tunnel set up for me. So we've got that, and that's a very, this will be a very important loop. So now that we have that, let's think about our pedestrian connections through here. So I know that we've been doing a lot of pedestrian planning, but we still have these fairly large block sizes in some of these areas, and we'll need pedestrian connections or roads through there. I'd prefer to have pedestrian connections if I can. Although, it looks like we've gotten a little wide here, so. Okay, and because this is the Verde Beach grid, we are gonna need lots of pedestrian connections throughout this area. All right, so I think we have most of the pedestrian connections that we'll need through here. Of course, there's always more you could do, but this is kind of what I was hoping for. I want it to be a very walkable place. I really want the emphasis in this entire area to be on pedestrian activity, bicycling, transit. Uh, one of the main reasons I'm 
placing so much emphasis on this is you'll notice that there are no uh, collectors throughout this entire area. There's an arterial ringing the top, but this is going to, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this roadway network considering it's all local streets. You can already see if you go over here into the Gombe district that there are times when uh, Buccaneer Street is acting as a an arterial or as a collector and you see regional traffic on there and I'm nervous that we're going to see the exact same thing happen over here with uh, Rudolph Street. Well, why don't we just correct that now? Okay, so there were at least a couple of streets whose names we could steal. <laughs> so, uh, it, and it was painful for me that one of those streets is Buccaneer. Um, still bitter about the Super Bowl. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I will be bitter for a long time. Uh, okay, so now we need to think about city services. So I don't think that our healthcare coverage is a significant problem because of our connections that we have into uh, the Beach Park area, which will still need to be renamed, and Gombe District. So we're good there. We could always use some more community amenities. Now, I don't think a pool would be the worst thing or the most awkward thing to see in this area. In fact, I think it might be something you would see in this area. So I might add a pool and a yoga garden. And it could one of the reasons why I'm really focusing on all these amenities is you can even see over here it's helping this area and there's not a lot in terms of park space by not a lot I mean none <laughs> we, we kind of have the unique uh, buildings acting as our, our our method of making people happy over here you see everyone is you know the happiness is, is high um, but this park here fireman's park is really what is going to provide all of that that happiness so we've got that. Our fire coverage is okay. I think we could probably use one more fire uh, department over in this area. I might actually place that on this corridor, Spruce Street. Uh, one of the reasons for that is it has good access to both Vine Street and this Through Street and should provide some coverage down here, closer to the coast. We are gonna probably need to do something a, a, when we finally build out a sunset, we'll probably need to get something closer to there. But for the time being, this is at least a big help. We've already remedied our police coverage, so we should be good there. The next consideration is schools. So I wanna take a look at our education panel. We have tons of availability for elementary schools and high schools. It's not in this area though, so we're gonna add that. University coverage is shamefully terrible for a community with a, a system as, as good as this one, but I do see that our, our, our financial situation is okay. So I want to go back to this and really start to, <laughs> I want to go back to this uh, school and really start to rethink that universal education and our sponsorship deals policy. And maybe we can get some more folks interested in, in going to school here. So I thought that enabling that policy would get our campus attractiveness high enough <laughs> to, 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 to make it possible to reach the next level. Maybe we need to take a look at a few other things. Staff's in a good spot. Ticket prices are reasonable. Might need to do just a little bit to increase our campus attractiveness because I think we are, I, I, don't, I don't think that this student population uh, is necessarily a problem. I think we're going to be able to remedy that. One of the interesting things that I, I sandboxed, uh, we've had these problems with the, the university. So I placed an Institute of Technology and then I deleted it. And that appeared to fix some of the problems with my school. So I'm going to place that for now. So you leave this here and it's going to start to siphon off students. First of all, it's going to boost up the student population generally in the city and then it's going to start to siphon students from the Jane Goodall Institute that is not what I want so I'm going to place that for just a little bit wow our financial situation is 
bad. <laughs> and after that, we are going to, once we, we take a look at it, you can see that the student population is declining. More students going here. I'm going to delete this and see if that helps our situation over here. The other big help is going to be population. I don't know if that was kind of more of a, a random happenstance sort of thing, but it did seem to, to make a difference. We'll come back to that later. So I think we are in a spot now where we can start zoning. So let's think about what we're zoning. So a lot of what we're going to have is commercial along this corridor. Whoops. I want low density commercial in this area. I think that the sizes of the buildings are a little more suitable and appropriate. So we are going to, to have mostly low density in this area. And I think that we're just kind of ring uh, Rudolph Street with lower density commercial. Now, near the university, I think we have an opportunity for a special district. So we don't really have an entertainment hub over here, and I think we need one. So what we're going to do is carve out an area over here, and we're going to have an entertainment district. And 50 Cent, uh, he has his memorial statue, and he was not impressed by having a memorial statue in Verde Beach and decided to come to the city to complain. But once he got here, he realized just how charming a place it was and decided he's gonna open up his own nightclub. And because Verde Beach loves him so much, we're gonna make this the in the club district. All right, and that is going to be an entertainment district owned by 50 Cent. <laughs> so <laughs> he's a big fan of the city and we are happy that uh, he now lives here. This is going to be incredibly loud, so that's something to keep in mind. But it would seem to fit in well, uh, I guess not with the cemetery. That was <laughs> maybe not the best spot to place that from that perspective. As you get out of the nightclub, you get to observe the headstones. I guess that could lead to some interesting night tours. Uh, but it would provide an opportunity. But actually, before I get a little ahead of myself, I do want to create one more district. And that district is going to be right here. So what I'm thinking is some of our special districts would really fit in well here to make this a destination to, to come to. So we've got our, our, our entertainment district here. So someone could leave a football game and go to a bar or a club. And then over here, a shopping district to kind of transition us into what is gonna be the extension of our downtown and this transition between the two. And I actually might extend this district up a little bit further because we know that we're gonna have a lot of commercial demand over here. And I do want a suitable transition between, so one of the reasons I'm doing this is I want a suitable transition between all of this entertainment that I just placed and the commercial uses in this area. And I don't want it just to seem like all the commercial uses are exactly the same. That is not at all the intention. And then next to these buildings, we are going to place offices, thinking that these could be offices that have some synergy with uh, both the Science Center and the Aquarium. So it's important to remember that over here, all of these buildings are also going to, to have that mid-rise band, which is going to be incredibly beneficial to us. So I did not place any schools over here, and I said I was going to do that. I think that we want to have some community schools and maybe some higher end educational options over here. I am going to keep these a little bit closer to, uh, I'm going to keep these a little bit closer, at least this a little bit closer to the collector, to try to maximize the radius that it can, it can, can impact, but we will add a couple to the neighborhood as well. Or at least one. <laughs> I don't think that we can add a couple. And then we'll have a high school as well. And I want to say, yeah, we have an Institute of Creative Arts already, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I want to make a pedestrian connection over here between the schools. We should place some amenities near these schools so that the students aren't trapped in their school with nothing else to do besides 
look out at concrete. So this will impact our path network and near these schools we'll need to make some modifications. That's quite all right in my mind. It's worth it. I had to get really creative with this path connection or with this uh, with the, the placement of this uh, of this uh, basketball court here, but I think it turned out okay. And reasonably, these schools would likely take advantage of some of the amenities in close proximity anyway, so not a huge deal. So. Now that we have all of this in place, let's finish up those path connections near the schools. All right, that's great. Now, I'm going to zone for a bunch of stuff that you might go, well, why is he doing this? This doesn't make any sense. I want to place a lot of the commercial zoning up front. And I know that this area right here is not at all suitable for anything outside of commercial. The main reason for that is it's just way too loud. So I know that there's a lot of commercial with absolutely no demand for it, but it's going to be too loud for any other type of use. And I am placing lower density commercial to try to minimize the sound. So hopefully when we look at our noise curves, it's a little more gentle than it otherwise would be. We should actually take a look at that right now and see and plan our land uses around yeah and you see that this whole area right here should probably be commercial or offices I'm probably gonna go with commercial because I, I want to have some lower density I think along the upper edge to taper off from where we have all of this high density all right so I think we are finally in a place where we can place some of our residential land uses and we're going to go pretty heavy into the residential land uses so i think we're going to use buccaneer as kind of the dividing line for a higher density land uses on this area on this edge and over here um, we're going to probably have lower density residential uses uh, as well on that on that uh, other side of buccaneer And I hate using this kind of painting tool for zoning. It just feels really, really bizarre to me. However, in a situation like this, it works out really well because I am trying to maintain the zoning within a kind of weird area. So I do always want to check after I use this tool though because you can miss things. Very nice. And let's crank the speed a little bit because we are very excited to see how this area is going to develop. So generally I'd be a little leery of having a whole bunch of residential uses along this road. I mean I still I guess I kind of am <laughs> you know, even though I'm doing it. Uh, people don't like to live in areas that have lots of traffic or are very loud. It does happen but it's not desirable it would certainly have a negative impact on the value of the property there. I'm just kind of going through and making sure that we're not, so you, when you zone these things, you can sometimes end up in a situation where your paths get zoned over, and I don't want that to happen. I don't want to break my path network. I've worked so hard on it, <laughs> so. Okay, and I'm trying to create that transitional buffer in between this area over here and some of the residential uses. And I think that this zoning pattern, while it's not all that mixed up, will work really well. Everything's within walking distance, so it doesn't necessarily need to be mixed use everywhere, although I would prefer it if I could do some sort of vertical mixed use. I would imagine that this area would be incredibly walkable. But we do have transit in this area, and that is going to be a big help. And look at our population. It's just, uh, you see it's finally going up. It's helping our budget. Everyone's happy, including me. So <laughs> we'll just uh, keep this thing going, except for this. Just, just a, a place for criminals. <laughs> Even though we have our police, uh, police on patrol, only two cars out, and apparently they're not at all interested in taking care of this crime problem over here, which is a shame. We should uh, definitely make this a safe place. Maybe we'll need to increase the security budget over here 
as a method or as a means for ensuring that we're in a good spot with uh, with with our with our police coverage. Okay, so this is going to continue to develop, and we'll we'll clean up some of the the weird lumpies and bumpies over here in a minute. But what I want to focus on now is transit service. So we placed the subways, uh, the, the, the metro lines in here, but we didn't actually extend service there. So let's call this, first of all, probably should make sure, yes, we're on the metro lines portion. So we have two green lines. So I don't know which one we're actually looking at. The Hamilton line is probably the actual green line. We'll make this the dark green line, and we're gonna name this Fireman's, or I don't know if this is actually eastbound or if it will remain eastbound, but I want two different lines. We're gonna have them going in different directions, an eastbound and a westbound loop. And truthfully, it might actually be easier just to eliminate this and start over. Let's do that. So I do want to meet back at Central Station, but then I want to loop through here. And then we're going to mirror this line in the opposite direction. This is going to be a very, very high quality service, very fast, very desirable. And there are certainly other lines that we could add. It's, it's kind of a shame that there's no connection through here. You have to transfer. And we could certainly work, we're going to need to extend these subway lines in the future. I really think that Old Verde Beach could use some subway service and we could kind of work that into the university and loop it through here. But that's not what we're working on today and we'll have an episode with more focus on the subway lines in the future. So we've got that established. At this point, I kind of want to let this run for a second and see what happens. So I was going to stop this little time lapse and then I, I watched as the <laughs> entire nature preserve decided to burn down. I thought to myself, this is the best view of this that we've ever had. So <laughs> might as well take a look and see what happens. And uh, it's, it's sad <laughs> what happens. That said, I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time in a little while rebuilding this. At least they were able to take care of this and save uh, people's lives. Okay, so we have the Palms National Forest back in order. And, uh, you know, so one, one of these episodes soon, we're going to need to take care of that. This is not a good <laughs> um, solution just to leave it. But for the time being, it's a solution that we have. So <laughs> at a later date, we are going to address that, though. I'll try to add some fire breaks. Maybe something a, a little more significant to, to kind of try to stop all these fires from occurring because <laughs> up to this point we've kind of just let it let it go so i am rezoning a couple of these areas to have a little bit of mixed use within here we have a significant demand oh shoot i did not mean to do that now we've committed <laughs> those buildings are gone uh, what i meant to do was just have a couple of areas with commercial not to demolish a whole bunch of residential in place of commercial. It's unfortunate. So let's take a look at our transit lines. I'm curious. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, we need to pause because we are going to kill everyone in the city. <laughs> so maybe this is the last thing we need to take care of. Let's, before I get ahead of myself, yeah, our water availability is in a really bad spot so we're going to need to take care of that and our sewage treatment is also in a bad spot so we didn't we took care of a lot of infrastructure but one thing we didn't take care of was water so we will add a water tower over here and i do think we should think about other areas where maybe we could have added one where we didn't this roundabout seems like an excellent location for a water tower 
<sighs> so we ran out of space over here in our public works campus and that was a mistake of my own creation. We are going to fix it today, right now because we have to. <laughs> and we're gonna use a significant amount of eminent domain to make this happen. So I think we're gonna, going to extend out this campus. Let's level this. And I want to extend this out far enough to be able to fit three more of these uh, advanced eco um, facilities. So much eminent domain. <laughs> so I would feel bad about it if it weren't so necessary. So I want to see how deep this is. It's about 400 and this is 160. So I guess I could count the tiles too and it's nine. So I need to go 10. Perfect. Now I think that having that water pipe under the road or under the buildings might cause some problems. So we are going to need to eliminate that for the time being. I want to extend this road. Now I'm going to run into problems like this and I might need to just do all of my grading and then let the water flood this area and then do the fixes. Well, that can't be good for the city. <laughs> but, but we've got to do what we've got to do. Okay, now we can slow it down. We're still running into, running into some weird stuff with our heights. Okay, so now I think that we've made significant enough changes. We can get this to be flat. And now we can have River Street have a new connection because we decided to take the river for River Street. Perfect. Let's finish out adding these facilities and then we'll make a couple of adjustments. Now let's get that road naming corrected. Perfect. And we've really uh, had some significant things happen over here. I think we're going to continue our eminent domain. This is not the most there's a lot of commercial uses already over here, so I'm not overly concerned about having a whole bunch in this area. So I think I'm gonna to try to replace some of those industrial uses for general products, because that's gonna be a more imminent concern now. Okay, so again, we're not leaving ourselves with much room for expansion, but I think we are leaving ourselves in a place where we will be okay. I am gonna put a couple of commercial uses along here as well. I don't know why I didn't add these in the past, but I think that at this point, um, there's enough density of, of uh, industrial uses that it would be nice for the workers to be able to drive through here, pick up a bite to eat. You know, it, imagine there'd be like a subway sandwich shop or maybe a gas station that would, would pop up. And you need those in an, in, an, in an industrial area. So why not include those here now? Oh, no. Ah. Well, that's very unfortunate. <laughs> Luckily here in Verde Beach, we are used to rebuilding all of our, <laughs> all of our most important facilities. It's, it's, it's kind of a, a rite of passage at this point. And I, I did want to take a look at this. I, I didn't realize that all the <laughs> buildings were going to be destroyed. Uh, but one thing I see now is that our student population is going up. That is likely because of our additional population over here, but I did want to give us a fighting chance with that uh, kind of that weird stunt that I pulled. <laughs> so, oh, this water tower is not working. Mulligan, and we will add that over here. See if this is close enough. Nope, they hate it, but I love it. <laughs> so. There's not really a great place to, to get the water to connect though, so we're gonna have to actually go all the way around. So we could go underneath the rail right away, but I, I can't imagine in a million years that the rail company would be all that excited about allowing a, that sort of disruption to what they're doing. Okay, so I think we are in a better spot now. We are not burning, <laughs> so that's something. And we're filling in over here. The, our biggest issue is uh, employees, not enough educated workers. And the nice thing is at least the university appears to be picking up its pace at getting students. Let's take a look at the rest of our education pipeline though. 
we have enough elementary capacity, enough high school capacity, our university capacity is still, for some bizarre reason, low. So things will slowly improve with this, I believe. We'll just need to keep an eye on that. It looks like the number of students is increasing as we let this simulate, albeit ever so slightly, and it's taking time. Um, I'm, I'm reluctant to add any more facilities though until we let this go a little bit. So at least one more episode, I'll let this kind of kind of go through and see if our population increases. Just as I've been talking, it's gone up a little bit. And I think that we could get this to a five-star university if we are just patient. And I know it's difficult, but I think that's the right choice right now. So I am seeing some significant transportation issues. So that's certainly going to be something that we need to look at in the future. You see our traffic flow is just horrendous at this point. Something is going on over here that is just destroying us. And I'm not sure if it's a post sorting facility seems to have a lot of traffic. And our biofuel buses are just all over the place. So this is a problem with concentrating these sorts of uses. I'm wondering, I may just go ahead and relocate this right off the bat because it's giving us all sorts of grief. So Station Road uh, functions kind of like an arterial, unfortunately, uh, with, uh, with some of the things that are happening here. But I think it might not suffer the way that, uh, uh, at least that part of Station Road might not suffer as bad as this part. And there was nothing there, so I'm not overly concerned about it. That's a very old facility, so hopefully, hopefully we could rationally make that change and it's not an issue. So one of the other things to keep in mind is that our population has jumped by about 10,000 people. And when you have that sort of thing occur, you can end up in a situation where um, you end up with traffic jams because people are moving in. So, and I do see there's a lot of pedestrian activity on this bridge. That's another concern of mine that maybe we're having these issues because there's a lot of pedestrians. That's not something I want to discourage, but at the same time, if it's creating issues, we're going to want to figure out a way to get those pedestrians where they want to be in another way. And that might be something as simple as adding a train station a little bit closer. Although when you look at our lines, that it's on the wrong side. So it's, 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 it's really a challenge. And this is what happens when places develop is all of the solutions that work in a small town or a smaller city are a little more challenging because you're working within the constraints of the area that you have. So traffic is going to be something we need to look at soon. And that might be remedying it with transit, bike and pedestrian infrastructure could be a variety of things. Yeah, very, very concerned about this area, though. This is not working the way that it should. <laughs> so, and I think that's very apparent. We've got all these post office vehicles right here. We need to get them closer to Arterial. I mean, that's we need them to load onto a local road that's not as busy as Smith Street. And um, that'll be something that we need to look at in the future as well. But I don't want to get too sidetracked. I love to be sidetracked. Um, having this sort of clean industrial building near a more residential or commercial area might be another way to disperse that traffic truthfully or oh, having it over here would be great hmm maybe i will get sidetracked for just one more moment no bother it's not going to fit over here anyway so it was an idea that i thought might have some merits but there's not really space for it over here unfortunately not unless we move our waste transfer facility. Hmm. But that's very full. <laughs> so, whoa, we have reached Metropolis. We finally have airports. We can finally purchase that tile that we need. Uh, and that's going to help out a lot. So I'm very, very happy that we're finally there. And I think I'm going to end the episode by actually purchasing this tile. And bringing up something I'm going to ask in a community poll. So one of the issues that I'm running into with Verde Beach is, so we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles purchased. I'm purchasing eight and it's mainly water. We are gonna use that water. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. But there's only one more tile that I can purchase. 
And that means that I either need to start just jamming density into these nine tiles, or I need to add a mod. Now my preference would be to add the 81 tile mod, and I'm kind of curious how you all feel about that. You know, I, I don't want the series to, to deviate from the realistic form. I think there's a lot of neat things I could do if I had more land available to me, particularly as it relates to this area over here that I've been reluctant to develop with only this strip of shoreline. I think it'd be really cool to get a park over here and some residential development, some suburban development, and uh, maybe an office park. I think there's a lot of neat things that we could do, but we're running out of space. So let me know what you think about that in the comments, and I'll probably have a community poll going out at some point asking that very same question, unless I see an overwhelmingly positive um, response to that question in the comments. So let me know. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I do think we're going to cut it off here today. We will do more in this city very soon. But uh, I'm very pleased with the progress that we made, we've made today. We have started to remedy some issues. We have our budget in a good spot. We are now allowing students to go to our university for free again. We're filling up cemeteries, so we're unlocking buildings, so that's great. Uh, you can see that our, our student population at the Goodall Institute for Conservation is climbing through the roof. We've made Fireman's Park a place to be proud of, and we've even expanded our water treatment facilities, which was an added bonus I didn't anticipate taking uh, taking part in today. So that's, that's it's exciting. Um, and we have increased our fire coverage and repaired all of our main buildings in our forest, zoo, and conservation uh, university that burnt down because it's Verde Beach. And that's what happens. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And look, to see if you are subscribed. You might think that you are and you aren't. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit the notification bell. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your support means the world to me and helps me out quite a bit. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate you, anyone else who's viewing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to leave you with a brief city tour. We'll take a look at the work we've done today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.